If you want to become a web application penetration tester or security engineer in 2023, this is how you do it. I'm going to show you a path, but not just tell you and have you blindly follow, but explain why each part is there and give you practical tips on getting the most out of your study time. This isn't just a one, two, three, do this set, then that formula. It's all about building the foundations and the right mindset and habits so that you have a long, successful and exciting career in the world of application security. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's dive in. The knowledge and skills to be a successful web application penetration tester are actually quite different to that of network penetration testing. Our path is going to look something like this. The fundamentals of web apps, some basic programming, network and security concepts, tools and common techniques, and then we'll talk about certifications and experience at the end. Here's my advice though on following this path. Stay flexible. If you don't feel like doing some dev work today, and you just want to do a CTF, then do that instead. Don't punish yourself for missing a day or doing something a little bit different than what you had planned. Perfection is a myth, but consistency is going to lead you to some amazing things. So with that, let's dive into the fundamentals. There are some key things here that we really need to get under our belts to be successful. This includes how web applications work, what technologies exist, HTTP, HTTPS, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Now, there are a lot of web-related technologies and you don't necessarily need to know them all, but understanding things like how templating engines work and the difference between the front-end and the back-end technologies is really, really important. Later on, you might decide to specialize in a specific technology or technology stack, but you still need to know generally what's out there to have a high level understanding of the strengths and weaknesses of different systems and architectures. And where can we go to learn all of this? Well, my advice is to start with YouTube. There's a great crash course on HTTP on the Triversy Media channel. And Web Dev Simplified has a whole series with introductions to HTML, SQL, modern development, and a lot more. In terms of learning resources in 2023, there's really no shortage of free and paid resources available. Let's move on to some basic programming. Learning how to read and write code is a skill that will pay dividends throughout your entire career. And in 2023, there's no excuse for lacking in this area. There are more courses on programming than you can shake a stick at. But why is it important? Learning some basic developments and building some applications will help you tune into how web applications work and also enable you to go much deeper in the future with things like code review. Now, a lot of the time people also say, do I need to be a developer? No, the goal of learning some development is to understand how applications work, not just memorize syntax. So to get started, here are two great resources that are free. The first is Free Code Camp, and the second is the Odin Project. Definitely worth checking out and putting some time into developing your skills. Let's talk about some other fundamental knowledge that we're going to need. Basic web app security, knowing about input validation, the differences between block lists and LL lists, and why things like hard-coded secrets are bad is really, really important. And since we want to make sure that we have relevant and up-to-date knowledge, understanding the basics of how servers and networks work, as well as containers, should also be considered fundamental knowledge. The best way to learn these things, in my opinion, is to wrap your application in Docker, build a web server, deploy your app, and do all of the necessary configuration to get things working. Experiences like this really shape you as a security professional. They can turn your theory into practical skills that you can apply. Another resource I'd like to share is the OWASP Cheat Sheet series. This gives you concise information on a huge range of topics. For example, take a look at the Docker security cheat sheet after you've deployed your app and see what you missed from a security perspective. It's also handy if you need to check some minor points or get familiar with the best practices on a certain topic quickly. So with common vulnerabilities and tools, let's talk about tools first. You need to know your way around Burp Suite and also a directory buster or fuzzer of your choice. You need to understand how enumeration tools work. And of course you need excellent note taking skills. Your best bet is to learn the basics of all of these tools and then improve your knowledge and understanding of them as you're doing practical things like capture the flag or actual pen tests. 
Most of the tools within web application security are designed to be fairly easy to use, so no need to go nuts here. Common vulnerabilities need to be your bread and butter. You need to spend a lot of time studying these vulnerabilities, how they work and how to exploit them. Not just because it will make up a large proportion of your testing, but knowing common vulnerabilities inside and out will help you find these vulnerabilities more quickly. It will help you pass job interviews. It will help your understanding so that you can chain vulnerabilities together. And finally, if you're reporting or presenting your findings, you'll be able to better explain what the issue is and the impact. The number of people I've interviewed who have years of experience but couldn't explain cross-site request forgery to me is frankly embarrassing. The OWASP top 10 is a really common topic to be tested on in interviews, so you'd be doing yourself a disservice if you couldn't clearly explain every category on the list and give some examples or scenarios. Aside from the OWASP top 10, check out the learning path on Portswigger's Web Security Academy. Everything here is common vulnerabilities or fundamentals that you really need to know. And this actually kind of links us nicely to our next topic, hands-on experience. If you're just starting out, try and get at least one security related certification under your belt. It will really pay dividends when you're applying for your first security role. You also want to start honing your skills on platforms like TryHackMe or Pentester Lab. And if you have time, try to improve your methodology a bit by going over things like the OWASP testing guidelines and learning a bit about the phases of a penetration test. So with our path out of the way, there are a number of things that we can do to increase our chances of landing a job in the AppSec industry. Now, these things are building some kind of online presence to showcase your projects and skills. You could contribute to open source projects or start to get hands-on with tools like SEMgrep and other vulnerability scanners. And it's definitely worth refining your interview skills by practicing answering questions and really make sure that you can explain any common vulnerability as though you were talking to a five-year-old. A quick bonus tip for those who are interested in CTF competitions, and these can be a little bit like Marmite. Some people love them and some people hate them. But for web application security specifically, CTFs are actually a great way to build your skills, even when the challenges are unrealistic. And why is that? Well, it forces you to try and understand what's going on, do research and think outside the box. And in an industry where every application we come up against is essentially bespoke, following only the rules and guidelines that the developer or the team that built it chose, it's a skill that we really need to develop. Now, getting started with CTFs can be tough, so the best way to do it is join a team and read lots of write-ups. If you want to find upcoming events and teams, check out ctftime.org. That's a great place to get started. So that's all I have for you today, and I hope that was helpful. It's likely that most of you already have some skills or knowledge in some areas, so if that's the case, don't start from scratch, build on what you know. Nothing is really set in stone. Good luck on your journey, and I'll see you next time.